Okay, uh, we're back. Uh, we just finished modeling this little guy. I'm just going to hit tab to go into edit mode. And then I'm going to move this all the geometry up. Make sure you select it first. I uh, see the little yellow dot down there. That is the kind of center of gravity of this model. And it just makes more sense to have the center of gravity of a mushroom be at its base. And uh, also to bring it up there so it's easier to see on that grid. This line, by the way, is actually... Uh, my light and let me change that type of light to sun because for the next thing which is going to be the sculpting I want to have like a lot of as much as I can a lot of even light and in fact I'm going to add another light and have that be a sun All right rotate that guy into place oh let me turn on my screen cast keys so you see what I'm doing? Okay, screencast keys is a very nice feature for uh, um, tutorials like this. Okay, so let me actually close that up there. We don't need the uh, UV editor at this point. Oops. Uh, there's another thing I need to do here. We're going to start sculpting, and before I do that, uh, I want to set up a few things here. Um, one is let's go into our environment, uh, get the shading and stuff right. So let's go to uh, press N to bring up our uh, options. And then uh, under the display tab, let's go ahead and under the shading, select GLSL. I don't know why that's not the default, because I, you always have to change it to GLSL uh, when you want to see the results of your textures and stuff in real time. Uh, so basically, go ahead and uh, under your shading model here, viewport shading, select texture. All right. So now we'll start seeing in real time uh, when we do our sculpting and texture adding and stuff, we'll be able to see exactly what's going on here. Okay, so right click on your object and then click on the materials uh, because this basic uh, default material is not going to be very good for us when we do the sculpting. It's going to be kind of hard to read what's going on. So let's click on new material and I am going to call this matte cap. Oops, if I can spell it right, that's what I'll call it. Okay, matte cap. And I'm going to turn the specularity way down. All right. And you'll see why in a second. So let's go ahead and tab. And uh, let's give it a different color here just so we can see that the thing is taking. All right. Okay. Done that. Okay. So uh, a matte cap material, if we go and click on the uh, textures panel, and select new texture and select the type as image map and go and browse for an image actually I've got a few here Mac. if you do a search on the Google do your Google foo and uh, search for matte cap you'll find a bunch of like these colored balls like this of different types uh, I'm gonna select this red one here now what this does is select That's weird. Oh. Again, the screen capture software is throwing me some fits here. Okay, so now we have it. Uh, and then under the mapping, select the mapping type to normal. Okay. So now what this does is, if you've ever seen uh, the program, the very popular but rather expensive and hard to use, I think it's hard to use, uh, program ZBrush, uh, then you will know that it has this kind of red clay look to it that's very, very nice and makes it so that you can uh, easily see what's going on when you're sculpting and building up your, your model and stuff like that. All right, so basically the matte cap material uh, is basically this kind of uh, shaded ball and it uh, will take your, uh, take your uh, object normals and take that into account so that when you're looking at things in real time shading, you'll be able to get a really good idea of what's going on. Okay, so uh, we've got our, our material set up and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and add the subdivision sur oh, I'm sorry. Actually, we're going to delete our subdivision surface modifier. And instead, we're going to add multi-resolution. You might be thinking, Brian, now why did you add that subdivision surface thing in the first place? Well, again, as I was modeling it, I wanted to get a feel for exactly what it's going to look like 
when it's subdivided. So I just did that just to during the modeling phase to get a good idea for what the uh, model is going to uh, approximately be shaped like. But now, in order to sculpt, we need this subdivision surface, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, we need this multi-resolution modifier here. And let me try to get this thing out of the way. Okay. All right, so the subdivision, or I'm sorry, the multi-res modifier is really incredible because it allows you to subdivide an object over and over, and each subdivision you can sculpt on it or in do different modifications to the object and it remembers all the modifications on each layer all right so it's perfect for sculpting because you could for example subdivide it maybe two or three times and then let's go to our sculpting mode all right we'll drag this interface out a bit more so we can oh come on baby You can see what's going on here. <clears throat> I'll move my radius and strength down a bit. And uh, with my brush type set to brush, I'll just go ahead and start dragging on here. And you can see that I'm already starting to kind of sculpt kind of like some, some veins here and stuff like that. Uh, the base of the mushroom often has like veiny protuberances coming up from the base here. And of course, you can select subtract, and you could get like, for example, you could draw like creases. Oops, subtract. You can draw kind of like divots and stuff in the surface. And as you can see, you can actually get quite deep with these things. And you'll you'll learn that um, as you can see, I didn't really have to set anything up. I just added this multi-res modifier. I just hit subdivide a couple times, and then I just went into sculpt mode, uh, set my radius and strength of my brush, and just started dragging on the model here. It's extremely simple. There's no setup or anything like that. There's no special thing you have to enable or anything. You just start dragging on the model. And uh, it's very zen-like. After a while, you can get lost. You can start uh, sculpting. And uh, all of a sudden, like, hours have gone by, and you're like, oh, man, I, I got really into that. You can get into, like, all the little details and nooks and crannies and stuff. So basically, uh, you sculpt all the details onto there, and uh, once you've sculpted all the details, uh, one thing I have to show you before we move into the more detailed sculpting is that uh, you may end up modifying the shape of the original object a, a bit. Um, what, I, what I do, in order for this uh, methodology that I'm showing you here to work, I get the actual shape of the object that I'm going to use as the final kind of well, for example, if I was animating it or whatever, uh, uh, I, I get the shape of the object so that I'm happy with that. Then I come in here and sculpt and, and stuff like that. Some people like to take like a box or something and then just start sculpting on it, which you could take a, a box and completely sculpt an entire character just from a box. But you'll have to do something called retopologizing if you do that, which basically means you, you then have to model kind of a low-res uh, cage on top of that. I don't like to model twice. Uh, I pretty much like to model once and, and get it to where I want it. But after you've done the sculpting, sometimes, for example, if you, if you put big divots or if you add big divots onto it, like gigantic bumps and stuff, you could get a rather large bump or something. Uh, you may change the original shape of your model a little bit. So what you need to do is go and click on Apply Base it may take a few seconds. So now if I go ahead and turn this off, uh, so now that we're not seeing the results of that anymore. Well, it's kind of hard to see here. I haven't really uh, messed with it too much, but you can see if I go into Z. It hasn't done too much. Oh, I'm sorry. There, there's a little bit. You can see our original uh, shape of our model was very smooth on the top, and this one's kind of a little bit bumped now. All right. So let's go back to that. All right. Oops, I went out. The reason why I went back to kind of like a gray shading is I went back to solid shading. I need to go to texture shading to show our matte cap material. All right, so that is the basics of sculpting. Uh, there's one more thing that you'll want to know how to do. Uh, again, there's so much to, you know, there's all these different brushes and stuff like that. 
Uh, just playing with them will let you know basically what they do. They're very self-explanatory. Uh, they do some really awesome things. Uh, the one more thing that I would like to show you to do is, in order to paint some more details into your sculpt, uh, paint with a texture. All right. So if, if you open up the texture tab here, you'll see that um, the only texture that we have is that matte cat material, that little uh, ball there, and that's not really going to help us out. We want to paint like the little divots and rivulets and stuff onto this mushroom. So uh, I'm going to go ahead oops, and I'm going to go up here to the texture tab and then I'll just click on, uh, well actually I'll just click on a new material. I'll create a new material. All right. It's too bad you can't add this from the texture tab, but for right now you can't. I'm just creating a new material, and I'm just using this dummy material in order to uh, be able to browse for some uh, images or whatever for our textures. Oops, I'm sorry. Let's click on the little uh, brush icon, and let's create a texture brush. All right. And you could, for example, use these procedural textures. I'll go ahead and, and click on image or movie, and then let's go ahead... Go to our images. Oops. And I have a folder here of bump maps. Click on our little icon to show the bump maps. All right. And so, for example, you could uh, let's choose this one, this dolphin skin here. Okay. It's being quite quite problematic because of all the processing power going on here. Okay, it selected it. Okay, so now you can see that uh, that new uh, texture because I selected the little brush icon here to choose a texture brush. That now shows up in the texture brush window, and now uh, we can. I'm going to select subtract. I, I've noticed that these things, these uh, kind of black and white images, tend to work really good. I'll move up the radius here. Usually what you would do is you go back to your little uh, uh, modifier tab and then you would subdivide it some more and you would apply the, the textures uh, brushes to a higher subdivision level. But since I think this thing's going to probably kind of flake out on me if I try to do that, just go ahead. There we go. But as, as you can see here, you can see that it is in fact applying the map it's applying kind of like like detail and stuff like that so all right so just imagine doing this later on maybe I'll get a, a faster machine or lower the resolution down or something like that I'll do some actual tutorials about nothing but sculpting but that's not really the purpose of this set of tutorials so I'm just giving you an idea what you would do again you would go to a higher sculpting level and start sculpting these and you'll see that it starts looking if you have high quality images that you use as your texture brushes it can start to look very detailed very quickly and in a later part here in the next part you'll see the results of this All right. so basically just sculpt to your heart's content and once you're done with that go ahead and save out uh, your project with a different name for example like you know mushroom uh, displacement or whatever and then once you've gotten all your sculpting done, we're ready to go to the next phase, which is where we're going to bake the textures, the displacements and stuff, onto the original low-resolution model so that that way we don't have to have the entire, um, the entire uh, you know, processor uh, occupied with all these billions of polygons or whatever.